This is the Power Age. Watch it, buddy. Yes! It's the Atari. Tui. I didn't think I'd be getting a Super uh, Nintendo 64 game. In 2001, Banjo Tooie became the last Nintendo 64 game my dad ever got me. But for this story, we'll need to go back a few years. When Nintendo launched the Nintendo 64 in 1996, gaming had officially changed. Graphics, gameplay, and presentation were evolving. Welcome to the next level, Nintendo! Yeah! Dad, a gaming enthusiast and lover of film and creativity, was there with the video camera documenting every major release. He even rented a Japanese Nintendo 64 way ahead of its US debut. This is it, the Japanese machine, and we got it. Super Mario 64 was a revelation for me. It opened up a new doorway of imagination and possibilities. By 1997, classics like Star Fox 64 had started making their way to the platform, and as our little library of classics increased, I was eager to show them off with the video camera. And you know what? Dad was too. Here he is filming a four-player deathmatch on Duke Nukem 64. It's a launcher. What's up? Oh! <laughs> What's up? <laughs> you were standing there and I went to the, the portal and I repaired somebody was just standing there like this with the back to me so I was like, hey, uh, Why not? Someone killed me. I just busted somebody. That was me. Wait a second, I just jumped off this. Okay, now I got armor. Cool. From on the couch, what's this? What's this thing what's up down here, thing? right? What? Yeah, get it. Get it before. Get it. Oh, yeah, it's a Tommy Kill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Boy, do I feel good. You're still minus one. Hey, son of a gun. Hello, where am I? Hello? It's hard to imagine it these days, but this was how we gamed back in the late 90s. Four people sitting around a video game console and a television, playing a game together on the same screen. Charge it up with the A-Bank. Cherry bomb! Oh, I didn't know you could try the cherry bomb. Ugh. The Nintendo 64 was a multiplayer powerhouse. This was the console of choice when your buddies came over. It's tight. It's tight. Oh! You <laughs> fool! <laughs> and while first-person shooters like Duke Nukem 64 or GoldenEye were the gold standard, fighting games were another go-to genre for the console. Play Fighters! Play Fighters for Super right. NES? Yeah, no, Nintendo 64. Well, what do you say? Thank you. Well, that's your one present for Christmas Eve, so I guess I know what you guys are going to be doing. <laughs> yep, playing Nintendo 64. And play we did. Interplay presents. <laughs> Interplay. <laughs> well, at least this is a cool Play opener. Player, 63 and a third. Not bad, huh? It's Steve. Not just joking. Not joking. <laughs> he's better be joking. He's gonna be choking. Chris wasn't joking. Of all the N64 games Dad captured us playing that year, Clay Fighter 63 and a third left a lot to be desired. <laughs> what a great Christmas game. Even Maggie seemed unamused. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he used chopsticks on me. Oh, no, it's gonna win! A pair 
community of Mortal Kombat, this franchise was sort of a big deal back in the 90s. I had it on the Super Nintendo and loved that one. Clay Fighter! What is it? Clay Fighter! Clay Fighter! Fighter. Wow! And while 63 and a third was one of the worst N64 fighters, there was another we owned that was pure gold. I think you know the one. Killer Instinct Gold. And uh, Killer Instinct Gold, which is better than the arcade 3D background. Man, look at all these. We had a lot of fun with Killer Instinct Gold. In fact, we reviewed the game back in 1997 on my living room carpet in front of our television. There's finishing moves where you can knock people off the building and they'll die. It was part of a series that we were creating called The Game Viewers. Me and my buddy Brian would review Nintendo 64 games, but we never got past the first review, Killer Instinct Gold. Hi, this is Tyler. Me, Brian. And we're here to bring you Nintendo 64. Our first and our first volume of of game viewers. We are here to show you Nintendo 64, which is a great system that came out in September the 30th, 1996. We'll start with a magic hat right here. Back in the background, we're showing we're showing Star Fox 64. We'll, put, we'll, we'll, we'll take something out of the hat. Whatever game it is, we'll show you on the screen. The lucky game is Killer Instinct Gold. Here we go. As you know, this game it has a lot of characters, such as Saber Wolf, a wolf. It has a girl named Orchid who has a has a cane that swoops around, and it has a guy with a sword. He has a blue like bandana, like a ninja on him, and some of the other characters like Gorgo, think. Someone like that. He's like the boss of the game, and he's very hard to beat. There's finishing moves where you can knock people off the building, and they'll die. And you knock them off the bridge. It's very encouraging game to play. Very encouraging game, folks. Very encouraging. If you ever get in touch with this game, or ever try to find this game, it'll be a very good game to buy. This is going to sink gold. It's a great game. Oh yeah, this is going smoothly. This is the fatalities. This screen shows fatalities. He didn't do any fatalities. Well, the time just ran out, so now he's he's versing Maya. Maya lives in the jungle, and the music on the jungle level is very good. Maya has these daggers that she throws. She's like a like a little jungle girl, and she's like very good to play with. She's very quick, very athletic. How do you rate this game on a scale of 1 to 10? I give it a 10. No, I give it an 8. Excuse me. Brian, what do you give it? 8. 8 and 8 are pretty good. 8 rates as a great game. 9 rates is a fantastic game. 10 rates is a mega hit. One rat rates is a sour, two rates as poor, three rates as clumsy, four rates as uh, not very good, four, five rates as mediocre, six rates is very good, seven rates says cool, I told you eight is great, nine is fantastic, ten is a mega hit. This is the magic hat again. Let's see what we will choose now. Brian? Just then, the camera battery died. We would never remember what the next game was going to be, nor did we ever attempt to do something like this again. Of all the consoles I grew up with back in the 80s and 90s, I think the Nintendo 64 was the one I played most with friends. It was the first console to have dedicated four-player support built right into the system. There was nothing better than spending a day inside the house with your buddies, four Nintendo 64 controllers, and a multiplayer Nintendo 64 game. These were days lived and time spent with good friends and family that I'll never get back. I'm just glad dad got so much of it on tape. 
because 1997 and the Nintendo 64 represent some of the fondest memories of my retro life. It's Maggie, the Christmas dog. <laughs> 